Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the outline template that we've that I've provided for your speeches as well as your sample outline assignment. Um, and in the process of that, I'm also going to go over organizing a speech. So this is really going to be a review on pretty much everything that we've already learned in this public speaking unit and a little bit of preview of what's to come. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And I'm going to open up the outline template. So now you should see me in the corner and you should see Microsoft Word up here. And um, Lily's going to join me, I think, here as well which is pretty timely because I'm going to actually do this sample speech about uh, cats. Um, and the reason why is because I had a feeling she'd probably join me. She usually does for a lot of these videos that I make. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a title of our speech and we're going to talk about um, domestic cats. Or in other words, cats and cats as pets. I'm going to put my name. And topic, we'll just say domestic cats. Now, general purpose. If you remember from the readings, the general purpose is either to entertain, to inform, or to persuade. So in this class, you'll be doing three speeches. You'll be doing a persuasive speech, last, an informative speech, and a self-introduction speech. So ideally, you kind of have one for each. The self-introduction speech, I would say, is a little bit more informative than perhaps to entertain. But I think to entertain, really is a good way to describe that. Um, mainly because you're just introducing yourself and kind of this is the first impression that the students are gonna get of you, so you're kind of trying to entertain your audience as well as inform them about you. But for this speech, uh, the sample speech here, domestic cast, we're gonna just say this is to inform. And we're going to inform our audience and notice here that the general purpose is just really that simple, to inform or to persuade or to entertain. The specific purpose is where we get a little bit more specific, but not that much more specific. We just always want to include a reference to our audience because, again, the whole reason of public speaking is to do something, to share something with our audience. So we're going to say, to inform my audience about domestic cats. Really, it's that simple. We have the general purpose, a reference to the audience, and then a little bit more specific on our topic. Now, um, before we get into the central idea or thesis statement, which is really a one sentence summary of our main points, we need to talk about determining main points and organizing main points. So um, we're going to come down here to the body of the speech. We'll just take a look at this. And there are several ways we can organize the main points. So domestic cats is a really, really broad topic. And I chose this on purpose because there's a lot of different ways we could go with this. Um, so we could talk about the history of domestic cats. Then we would really want to make probably our specific purpose to inform my audience about the history of domestic cats. But then it would be really easy to organize our main points. We're talking about the history. We would go with a very much a chronological way of organizing main points in that we could talk about cats um, from the past, you know, history of cats, um, maybe in the Middle Ages. And then we could talk about cats during the uh, Civil War period to World War II. And then we could talk about cats in the present. Um, I've also seen a lot of people for self-intro speeches do a very chronological of past, present, future. Who was I? Who am I now? Who am I going to become? It's another a really, again, a great way to organize that very chronologically. Another way is spatially. So spatial is more a geographical location. So you could talk about three different countries. You could talk about um, domestic cats in Canada the US and Mexico, and you could do them in that order. Now, if you did the cats in the US and then Mexico and then Canada, it's kind of out of order. There's not really a logical order for that unless you make some sort of logical order for it. But ideally, when we use more of the geographical, we're looking at there you've got a north to south, Canada, US, Mexico. So that's another one, the spatial. Um, that works really well for speeches about 
things that are in different locations. Like again, you think about like west to east. Um, if you're describing the parts of something, like the parts of the computer, maybe you start on the outside, like where the buttons are, and work your way inwards. That's more of that geographical or spatial. Um, if you're describing something like, um, again, the, the geography of something, or you're gonna talk about three different countries that you visited, it makes sense to go of like, instead of, you could do them chronologically, the order you visited them, or you could talk about how they are organized, again, north to south, west to east, east to west. I think you get the idea. The last way, though, and the way we're gonna organize the sample speech is topical, and that just means choosing three topics in some sort of logical order. Um, so, again, you don't want them to be in any random order, but they're not necessarily organized by chronological or more geographical. So, for this speech, um, when we're think, talking about domestic cats, we're thinking like, what do people really need to know about domestic cats? Like, what are people gonna wanna care about the most? Because really, again, when we speak to others, it's about the audience. And we're thinking they're gonna wanna know about cat food. What do cats eat? So we'll say cat diet. Um, we're thinking about, probably they wanna know about cat activity and behaviors. And main point three, we could talk about basic cat um, health and care. So that's what we would talk about, maybe things like changing litter and cat health and stuff like that. So again, this is kind of basic, you know, maybe for example purposes. And just as a disclaimer, as I go through these main points and add support, all this stuff is gonna to be totally made up. So, now we can really get into the speech. We have our main points, so now we can write a thesis statement. In this speech, I will discuss cat the diet, activity, and health of domestic. Notice here I've stated my three main points. I'm gonna see this again in a minute when we get to the introduction, which is the next area. So the first thing in the introduction is the attention getter. Research has actually shown, it's called primacy and recency effects, that people tend to remember the very beginning of speeches and the very end the most. So they're gonna remember what you say first. So it's important to start with something exciting. Don't just say, hi, my name's Emily, I'm here to talk to you about cats. Okay, well, guess what? For those people that don't like cats, and there are quite a few people that don't like cats, you've just lost all of them in your audience. So you really wanna start with something more exciting. Um, you could be really cheesy and corny and sing the meow make song, you know, meow, 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 meow. The audience would probably remember that, though there might be a few that are just, you know, oh, cover their ears, walk away. Um, you could state some sort of startling statistic. You could ask the audience a question. Um, you could show some sort of visual aid. You could show a really cute video of like cute little kittens going meow, 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 you know, little like mewing kittens, uh, something like that. Those would all be things that would gain the audience's attention. So for this purpose of this speech, let's just go ahead and start with the statistic. And we'll say, did you know that 80% of the U.S population owns a cat. Wow, that's a big number. Yep, totally made it up. Again, do not quote me on this. So now we'll reveal our topic and relate to the audience. We kind of like hinted at it that Peach is probably gonna be something about cats. Um, but we can easily relate this to the audience because we've stated the statistic. So now we can say, perhaps you or someone you know is part of that 80%. If not, odds are good that at some point you will have contact with a cat. So it's important to know some basics. Fix the indent there just because it bothers me. 
Okay, so notice what we just did here. We've kind of just related back to the statistic and said, if you're not part of that 80%, you're part of that 20% that doesn't have a cat, maybe you don't like cats, but you'll probably have contact with a cat, so it's important to know some basics. Now my credibility statement. Why am I personally credible? So here you don't want to just state like um, a random fact or something. You want to say why you are personally credible. I own a cat and have done extensive research on this topic. I could even say I have a PhD in catology. Again, I made that up. Um, so then we say our three main points again. And in order to do that, I'm just going to actually come up here. Yeah, I'm just going to copy and paste this. So this is my introduction. We started with the attention getter. We related to the audience. I've, I've established my credibility, and I've stated my three main points. I've had students ask me before, why do I need to state my three main points in the introduction? Like, I want, to be, I want it to be a surprise. And ideally, you want to state your three main points in the introduction because you really want to give the audience some signposts and ideas of where you're going with the speech. That helps them follow along a little bit easier, knowing like, okay, now they've moved on to this third topic, so now I know where they're at in the speech. Um, I think it makes us all a little bit uncomfortable when someone starts speaking and we're wondering to ourselves, where are they going with this? There's kind of that like level of uncertainty. When you just make it clear right from the beginning, it just makes it so much more, so much better for the audience to listen to. It's well organized that way. Now there may be some certain situations where you would not want to do that, but for the purposes of this class, I don't see any reason why you would not want to state the three main points in the introduction. Um, I did miss something in this introduction, if you didn't notice. I stated a statistic here, 80% of the US population owns a cat. I didn't do that research, let's be honest. Yes, I realize I made it up, but I didn't do the research I didn't survey the population, someone else did. Thus, this needs a citation. So, according to um, Jack Cat, author of the book, Cat, Cat uh, Nation. So, did you know that 80% of the population, according to Jack Cat, author of The Cat Nation, owns a cat? Notice my citation in there. I've got the author, and I've got the name of the book. So, same thing, when you do a citation, you're going to want to state the author and the name of the, either the article or the book. But we'll talk about that here in a second. So, the other thing, uh, transitions, and I'm going to talk about transitions a little bit more here in a minute. Um, transition to the body, we'll just start saying... Let's first look at the diet of cats. So, in preparation outlines, you always want to use complete sentences. Notice we did that for this. That really helps you organize your thoughts and write out your speech as much as you should write it out. You should never write it out word for word. You should never write it out in paragraph form. Write it out about this much. And then when you actually speak, you're going to be speaking off like two, three word terms. Put your note card, put your outline on note cards, but leave out the things like I and have on this. Fill in those as you go along. That's how it's gonna be more spontaneous. Trust me, as you speak, you won't miss those filler words. You'll fill those in as you go. The problem that I tend to see is, you know, you have your sentences written out, and it's really hard to follow all those filler words. You're trying to read those off the paper. If you just have the key terms and you put like, own cat, done research on your note cards. It's gonna be a lot easier to remember to just fill in the rest and say, I've owned a cat for seven years and I've done extensive research on this topic. Like you'll fill in that as you go. It will be much more natural to you that way. But again, that's for delivery. That's a little bit later in this unit. That's called extemporaneous delivery. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the body of our speech. Um, what I was getting at there was that your main points can be in this basic form. That's really the only part of your outline that shouldn't have a complete sentence. So again, here I'm gonna support main point one, um, and I'm going to say, according to Dr. Mike, the Mike Vet, Vet and I'm not even gonna to try to spell out veterinarian right now. We'll say, Dr. Mike Vet, 
a vet at Cedar Rapids Animal Clinic. Again, this is all made up. Cats should have either wet or canned food or dry food every day. He also states that cats should have water every day. And we'll say he, maybe we'll use a different citation for this one. According to uh, Nicole Cat, Cattington, that's a good name. To Nicole Cattington, cats generally graze throughout the day instead of eating meals at set times. Okay, let me fix the indent on that. Okay. So we have a couple facts here. Now notice everything in here is cited. So you don't always have to cite. If it's common knowledge, it's not something that needs to be cited. Probably what cats should eat, whether they eat wet or dry food, that's, that's a pretty common sense fact. Um, we would maybe want to interview the vet and cite the vet if it's, we're actually stating research about wet or canned food or what kind is preferable or brands or things like that. Um, but this is fairly common knowledge, but I'm just showing you this is how you would do a citation. One thing that I did miss here with Nicole Caddington, um, I didn't say who she is. Um, so that's like half a citation there. Um, it's better to say the author, you're giving credit to the person, but it doesn't really help your credibility because it doesn't tell me who Nicole Caddington is. So now we can say author of the book, um, a cat's diet. That's much better. Now we know, okay, that's who she is. She wrote a book. Okay, so we've got our first main point. Um, and uh, again, an, a, one more thing to mention here with your support. Support can be a lot of different things. Here I've stated a lot of facts. Generally, when you're speaking informatively, you will have a lot of facts like this. Um, for some speeches, you can throw in some personal experience. Obviously, that doesn't necessarily need to be cited. So I might actually have included for main point three there, my cat eats usually about one can of cat food a day and grazes and eats a little bit of dry food. So the next thing then is transitional statement. These are your transitions or your connective statements. Ideally, they want to connect the main points. So um, we're gonna say now that we've discuss the cat's diet, let's look at the cat's activities. Um, so notice there, I've restated the last main point and mentioned the next main point. These sign, these, um, these transitional statements are actually very important because they help you figure out when the speaker has moved from one main point to the next. Um, these are one areas that students tend to really lose a lot of points on speeches for, are having really clear connective statements. Now again, you don't have to be this specific, um, this cheesy of, you know, now that we've discussed this, let's look at this. You can be a little bit more creative with it, but ideally you really want to try to connect those main points. So you'll have one sentence that discusses the cat's diet and activities together. That connects it together, connective statement. So I don't really like the term transition as much as connective statement. All right, I'm not gonna come up with three more facts here. You kind of have the idea, I think, of how to do this. I am gonna talk about the transition one more time. We'll try to come up with a more creative transition. We'll say, um, as you can see, cats are pretty active. If your cat isn't acting so active. Perhaps these um, facts about general health will 
help you understand if it's time to see a vet. So then we're going into like basic health and healthcare. So um, notice here, see that grammar error there. Cats are pretty active. We've kind of included that summarized up what we just said about cat activity and then connected into, so maybe if your cat's not so active, let's talk about this. So we're, you, you can see that we're shifting here. We've connected those main points. And then we're gonna talk about our basic healthcare. Okay, we're gonna to go to the conclusion next. So I'm gonna say something like in conclusion or to sum up or now let's review what we've talked about today. And the first thing we're gonna do is restate those main points again. So we're just gonna review exactly what we've said. Um, for purposes of time here, I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna copy this and We'll make that I discussed the diet activity and health of domestic cats. Now I'm going to relate it back to the audience. Um, this is where you can say something like I, I tend to see a lot. Hopefully you gained a basic understanding about this. It, it, start, it starts to sound a little cheesy, corny. So we might want to be a little bit more direct with it in saying something like, um, if you are one of the 20% that doesn't own a cat in the U.S., hopefully the next time you have contact with a cat, you will better understand their um, behaviors and basic Care. And then the vivid ending. The vivid ending is always, and the attention getter are probably always where I end up spending the most time because, again, the primacy and recency effects. People are going to remember what they hear in the beginning and what they hear in the end. So you really want to put some thought into this. You don't want to just say, Hope you liked my speech. Thanks. Or the worst one I hear, and I hear this a lot, is, And that's it. Thanks not very memorable. So think about like what could we do here to provide a more vivid ending? Something the audience is going to remember. We could state another shocking statistic. We could show a picture of those cute kittens. We could show a picture of our own cat. I can show a picture of Lily who disappeared now but at least she made a little bit of an appearance. Um, there's a lot of things we could do here. So you want to kind of be creative and try to think of something that the audience is going to remember. So for this, I'm actually going to say, here's a, um, I'll say something like, I'll leave you with this cute video of kittens. And I might show like a 10 second clip a little kitten saying meow, 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 and being really cute. Because even if you don't really like cats, it's hard to not think that cute little baby kittens aren't cute. Okay, so then the last thing on my outline is going to be my Works Cited page. And this is where I'm going to enter the sources that I use. Um, I'm not going to do this here in the video. We will talk about this later in the research area. You're going to enter them in either APA or MLA format. So that does not mean copying and pasting websites. Now, I don't really go over this with you. There are websites like easybib.com. There's also um, actually a couple of Chrome plugins who's, uh, that you can use that will help you cite sources. You just put in the information that will create that citation for you. Um, so I don't care whether it's APA or MLA. I just want them in some sort of format. So that wraps it up. Um, hopefully, you now have a better understanding of how to create an outline. Notice what I just did there. Uh, sorry, I don't have much more of a vivid ending, except uh, I can, I guess, now that she just jumped on me, I can end with a picture of my cute cat.